Hey, it's Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, July 3rd. So today we have the moon moving out of Leo, going void, of course, around 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and locking into Virgo energy, 8.32 a.m. So anytime we have the moon moving out of the fiery, bold, brave, expressive, semi-dramatic uh, Leo energy to the earthy energy of Virgo, we come back down to earth and it may feel like we hit a brick wall until we can adjust a little bit. But here's the thing. The moon in Virgo, highly analytical, very critical. This is where we start putting things in order from the chaos that we've been living in, especially in our emotional state. We are doing a deep dive in our mental plane, in our heart space. We are taking care of our physical realities. We are putting things in their place. So we can expect that today is going to be highly transformative, especially in our inner realm. There are 10 different aspects here today. Eight of them involve the moon. The moon, while still in this Leo energy, is sextiling, making a beautiful aspect with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, and how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury, of course, is in its place of power in Gemini energy, still offering us a multitude of choices and options and paths and directions. We're still having to debate certain things things, topics and themes out, the extreme choices, the extreme decisions that we have in order to find a common ground. What we know to be true is that the moon representing our heart space, Mercury representing our head space, this particular interaction means that we are on the same page. We are getting in alignment with our heart and with our head. The moon in Leo being this Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, very raw, very vulnerable, very authentic, really in alignment with what makes us happy, what makes us uh, unique in our pursuit for passion, for desire. We are getting on the same page with the mental plane, meaning we have likely leaned into one choice, one path, one direction, one decision over the other. We still have some things to debate. We still have choices to make, but we are kind of moving away from one thing and moving closer to another. The moon will be semi-square the sun. Anytime we have the moon and the sun interacting, it is an overlap between the old and the new. The moon, our emotional selves, what it is that we've been attached to, where it is that we are using past experiences, and in this case, emotions, to dictate our present and our future. The sun, of course, illuminating what it is that we have to be focused on in the here and now in order to kind of create a brand new reality moving into the future is in cancer energy. So we are focused on our emotions. We're focused on our intuition. We are focused in on the home and family dynamic. We've had boundaries tested. We've had energy exchanges. We've had dynamics be altered. And now we're looking to set the stage for what is to come. Now, many of us might not have that end goal, that dream, that vision fine-tuned just yet, but what we know is that a semi-square provides us with a tension point, enough tension, enough pressure, enough conflict internally, if you will, in order for us to realize what it is we have to let go of and what it is that we have to lean in and learn to embrace more of in our present self in order to create a new future. So, the moon goes ahead and bumps into Pluto. Let me tell you, Pluto is the star of the show here today. Pluto is the god of the underworld. He rules over transformation. He does a deep dive in our psyche. He moves into the darkness, moves into the shadows, illuminates for us our past pain, trauma, suffering, and experience so that we can turn that darkness into light. We can turn that pain into power. This particular aspect that the moon still very much in Leo energy is making with Pluto is a deep dive into our raw and authentic selves, where it is that we need to be bold and brave and courageous to not let our past pain and trauma and suffering and circumstances dictate what is possible for us in the here and now and in futuristic situations. Now, Pluto is highly suggesting that we do have to kind of sit in the funk. We do have to feel the pain. We do have to kind of sit with the memories in order for us to be inspired and motivated to use that as 
as a fuel, as a catalyst to do better. The moon in Leo, again, representing the lion, right? We're not the wounded, scared little kitten that's hiding in a cave licking one's wounds. We are using our wounds as battle scars and we are not afraid to roar and let the, the other inhabitants of the jungle know who is in charge. We are holding ourselves with a little bit more pride for what it is that we've gone through, what it is that we need to celebrate as far as our battle wounds go and doing a deep dive into our heart space and into our head space, into the psyche that Pluto likes to dive in means that we are having aha moments, transformative inner realm moments that are going to boss us up in all the right ways. So the moon goes ahead right before it goes void. And again, when the moon goes void, it's unstable. It's shaky. We don't want to make any decisions. We don't want to make any commitments. We're questioning everything. We don't have a stable emotional ground. The last aspect that the moon and Leo makes is a trine, a good vibe with Mars, the god of war in Aries, which is his place of power, which means that we are focused on being motivated. We are focused on being inspired. We are unleashing a new level of warrior type of energy in order for us to push forward, to take action, to make a move, to actually pursue our passions, our dreams, our desires. Even if our anger is the fuel source that gets us there, especially seeing how this particular aspect takes place right after the moon and Pluto does this little dance in the darkness in order to illuminate the power, the strength that we can pull from our past experiences. This is definitely a high vibe energy. We want to keep ourselves in check, make sure we don't kind of tap into the negative parts of this, which is having a tantrum, having a little bit of a shit fit, using anger and frustration in the power trip kind of way. And instead, we want to just fuel our fire. We want to just fan those flames and really push ourselves the boss up to this warrior like energy so that we can actually move forward, that we're actually using this type of let's call it dark aggression in order to fuel our plan forward. This is when we're going to start seeing major changes. If you haven't listened to July's energy forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. This is setting the stage for the rest of the month. Now, the moon is going to bump into Chiron in a way that would suggest that we are very aware of our wounds, but we're also very aware on where it is that we're not going to let those past wounds, that past pain and trauma keep us in a state of paralysis. Again, still feeding off of the earlier aspect between the moon and Pluto and then the moon and Mars. This is a healing energy. We are using our pain, our trauma, our suffering, our wounds in order to create a brand new foundation for ourselves. We are still in cancer season. This is building a brand new foundation, having the correct boundaries to protect us to provide us with safety and security as we set the stage for things to come. The moon then is like transiting, right? We're starting to feel a little bit stable. This is likely the time I'm going to say around 11, 11 a.m. to noon ish, where we start feeling very heavy, very weighted, a lot of pressure in the mental plane. That is because the moon locks into Virgo energy. Virgo energy is ruled over by Mercury, ruler of the mental plane. It is a, a Earth energy that is ruled over by the stimulation, the conversation, the information, the analytical, logical, practical point of view in our mental plane. So what we can expect is that there's a lot of mental processing going on. We really have to put things in order. There's been a lot of emotional chaos. There's been a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas. Everything is up in the air. This Virgo energy helps us create order out of chaos. So we have the moon at this point kind of weighting us down, making us a little bit more grounded, practical in our approach, especially where emotions are concerned. And the moon in Virgo is going to go ahead and make a very favorable aspect with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth and expansion, blessings, abundance, belief. Now, Jupiter is in Aries for the first time in 12 years, all fired up, ready to start something new, ready to kind of initiate a brand new chapter, a brand new sequence where new opportunities can actually be bestowed upon us. And here's the thing. 
This magnifying glass comes in at the perfect opportunity with the moon now in Virgo, because now we get to zoom in on the details. So here's the thing. Virgo energy likes the details, likes the finest details for us to pick apart how it is we got here, why we think, why we feel the way that we do, the logic, the practicality, the plan, the strategy, the very small calculation that one needs in order to actually make a plan work. Well, Jupiter's over here giving us the great big vision, the great big picture, the great big dream. Not so fond of the smaller details. But what we can pull from this is that we are constantly allowing ourselves to project ourselves into the future dream and vision, thinking big, realizing what we want more of, and then having the actual capability to take that big picture and cut it up into smaller chunks, into those smaller details to actually make a plan and strategy on how it is that we're going to align with this big picture vision and what it is that we can start doing emotionally, mentally, and physically in the here and now to actually make that dream and vision come to life. So we have Venus Bumping into Pluto, like I said, Pluto is a key star player here today. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, passion, pleasure, money uh, in Gemini energy. So we have an open mind. We're looking for new methods. We're highly curious. We're in an experimental phase. We want to figure out what it is that we actually value. What is worth our time? What is worth our energy? Who is worth our love? And Pluto over here, of course, just wants us to do a deep dive into our past situations and scenarios. He's retrograde, so we have to look back. In Capricorn energy, looking at A, authority figures, B, systems, foundations, and routines, where we've given our power away, and C, masculine energies, where maybe father figure qualities and characteristics of our upbringing are now appearing in masculine energies in our partnerships, friendships, romantic relationships. This particular energy is going to remind us, uh, and I'm, I'm going to take you way back here. We go back to December when Venus went retrograde in Capricorn energy, then did a dance with the Lord of the underworld, Pluto himself, to strip away all of the fluffy layers of ego so that we could get very real with our heart space, with what brings us happiness, what brings us joy. So now we're having to rewind not only to December, but to the beginning of the year when we did the dance with the Dark Lord to see what has changed, what has transformed. Many of us have had an ego death. Many of of us have had to really take a good look on what it is that we've been pouring our time, energy and attention into. And many of us need to open our minds up to cut the cord with past situations and people in order to really put ourselves in a position where new like minded individuals, new levels of worth in people, places and things, especially money matters, can actually have the room to enter into our realm. The moon goes ahead, makes a positive aspect with Pluto. Mercury makes a very interesting aspect with Pluto as well. And let me tell you, our heart and our head are doing the deep dive into the darkness, into the pain, into the suffering. We're recognizing where it is that we've allowed these particular experiences to become too intertwined with our own identity, where it is that we're tired of it, where it is that we've been in a state of fear, in a state of paralysis, in a state of hoping and praying for change and not being brave enough to actually go after it. This is going to present us with new information. It is a negative narrative. So we do have to be cautiously aware that negative Nancy and Betty the bully are definitely coming out to play. But this is our opportunity to get in touch with how it is we actually think, actually feel, not from our ego, but from our higher self, rip it apart, because that's what this Virgo energy likes to do is tear things down, analyze it right to death and build it back up in a better way. We're going to wrap the day up with the moon, making a very interesting aspect with Jupiter. This kind of presents as an opportunity for us to grow and really put into, I'm going to say action, what it is that we've been doing in our inner realm. The moon in Virgo, of course, just wants to create order where there's been chaos, wants to kind of fine tune the details of our lives, wants to get a healthier, happier narrative on the go, wants to feel a little bit more stable, disciplined and rooted. 
Jupiter over here magnifying where it is that we haven't been feeling safe, stable, grounded, where it is we haven't had a healthy, happy narrative, where it is that we want more for ourselves, but we haven't taken the time to actually sit down and strategize what we need to do in this physical realm to actually align with the dream and the vision that many of us are just content to live in la la land in. There is an element, if you've been listening to the astro forecast for the week, if you've been listening to the daily energy forecast that I put out, you would have noticed that there's a huge general theme coming up as of late of many people complaining that they're what they're focused on, what it is that they're looking to manifest, it isn't happening. And a lot of that is due to the lack of boldness, bravery, courage, and physical accountability and responsibility in our physical lives. You can't just sit around with hopeful wishes and, and really like amazing visions that you want to see come true. You actually have to do the work in the physical realm to cl clear out the elements that are blocking said vision and dream from actually anchoring in. You have to create the space. You can't be sitting around wishing for a version of your reality to change when you're not doing any of the work to actually align with what it is that you're looking to manifest. So we are being presented with an opportunity for growth. This is almost like the universe is like, oh yeah, you really want it? Let's walk the walk and talk the talk. See if you actually can do what it is that is required of you in order to actually level up and receive the kind of blessings and abundance that you have been envisioning that you've been praying for.